You eat healthy, you work out, but you can't seem to lose weight. Chances are, even if you think you're doing everything right, something is missing. I've created a list of the top 10 mistakes you may be making that is stopping you from losing weight. So listen up because we're going to get to the bottom of it right now. Welcome to the Diet Starts Never podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Nigro, aka Coach Rach. This podcast will teach you how to live your healthiest life in and out of the gym and put yourself first again. Oh, and we get long lasting results here. I've made it my mission to help my clients ditch the diet mentality and heal their relationship with food and themselves. After transforming hundreds of bodies and minds, it's your turn. Are you ready? Welcome to episode 11. If you are here, it's because you want to better yourself and I'm here to support you on that journey. I'm not going to lie. Weight loss is really fucking hard. And although it, it should be as simple as calories in versus calories out, there's so much more that, that can inhibit you from dropping weight. I've been a health and fitness coach for six years and I've seen it all when it comes to weight loss. A lot of people think they're doing really well when realistically they are doing the bare minimum and vice versa. There are people who think they are doing really bad when really they are overdoing it completely. And then there are people who just create every excuse in the book. These people I find often have fear by their side and are afraid to step outside of their comfort zone because they think, well, what if I fail? But what will happen if you don't even try? I bet that outcome would be way worse than failing. Whatever type of person you are when it comes to weight loss, I bet you there is something you're missing that is holding you back from overcoming your struggles. So I went ahead and I created a list of the top 10 mistakes you may be making that is stopping you from losing weight. We're going to just dive right into it today. So number one, you are eating too many calories. This is the most obvious, but if you're eating too many calories on a day-to-day basis, you're not going to lose weight. Your total daily energy expenditure plays an important role when calculating how many calories you should eat daily. So if you calculated your calories and you overestimated your total daily burn, that TDEE, then you may not actually be in a deficit. If you're not tracking your calories and you're just trying to eat healthier, let's say, you can still be eating too much. A lot of healthy foods are calorie packed. So for example, a bowl from Chipotle with guac, sour cream, cheese, Doesn't that sound so good right now? It can easily be your entire daily calories in just one meal. Number two, you're not eating enough calories. We often think the lower calorie, the better when it comes to weight loss, right? Not necessarily. If you're a chronic dieter and you've been eating super low calorie for a long time, you're most likely putting sh- too much stress on your body and it's not even do it's not even receiving enough energy to function properly so in return you might feel exhausted all the time you might have crazy cravings you might feel weak sore struggle sleeping even more so i explained this as explained in episode 9 your metabolism it, your metabolism ugh, isn't broken it's damaged your body needs a minimum amount of calories just to survive. If it's not getting at least that, it's not going to have enough to function properly, let alone lose weight. Number three, your activity level is too low. You guys know, I, I often say, I'm not worried about exercise. That's actually the least of my concerns when it comes to weight loss. But if you are not moving your body at all, it's not going to increase your total daily burn and it's not going to help you push the scale. So calories burned is greatly affected by the amount of activity you perform through exercise and just daily activities. If you work a desk job, have a low step count and don't exercise, you're not going to burn enough calories to lose weight. And yes, you can manipulate this by setting your total daily energy energy expenditure to sedentary, but some kind of movement is going to be necessary to make a change. If you're sedentary and not losing weight, then adding in some activity, maybe hitting a step goal, getting more movement in may be your answer. Let's say you're hitting your calorie goal, but not getting your workouts assigned in. 
your calorie goal is calculated with your activity level in mind. So if you're skipping the workouts consistently, then you need to lower your calories. So that's why your activity level is too low to lose weight because you're skipping your workouts and you're eating for a higher activity level. Make sense? Number four, you're not sleeping. Oh mama, is this important? If you're sleeping only five to six hours per night, your body is not getting the time it needs to recover. This can lead to exhaustion, subpar performance in training, increase in sugar or carb cravings, sore for days, the list goes on and on. I know for me on a personal level, if I don't get proper sleep, not only am I a cranky bitch the next day, but I am craving anything with sugar in it. I want the chocolate. I want the ice cream. I want things that are going to push me outside of my macro goal and it's going to not keep me on track to my long-term goal, which isn't the healthiest decision for me. I like to keep it as clean as possible, as often as possible, because that's what makes me feel good. And if I'm exhausted, I can't get to the gym. I can't show up for my clients. I can't do my job. I don't even want to walk my dogs. So get your sleep. That is when our body recovers. It is so, so important, especially if you're lifting weights. That is when your body is going to reset. That's when your muscles are going to recover. They're going to heal from the literal damage you're causing them in the gym. Number five, you are overdoing it on the weekends. And this one is, yes, definitely obvious, but why are we not changing? Why are we not trying to find some kind of balance? Because it is absolutely possible to lose weight while drinking alcohol, while going out to eat, while living your best damn life, but you are just not allowing yourself to find that balance. So you may be thinking, well, I hit my calorie goal all week. Maybe I do eat slash drink more on the weekends. Those weekends can completely cancel out all the hard work you're putting in during the week. So for example, let's say you're consistently hitting your 1700 calorie a week, a day, 1700 calorie a day goal, but the weekends come around and you're eating 3000 plus calories on Saturday and Sunday. This will put your weekly average calories at over 2000 calories, taking you out of your deficit. So if this is you, it is time to crack down. And if your calories are so low that you don't have enough freedom to go out and enjoy your weekend, then it's time to increase your calories. Hint, hint, you can do this by increasing your total daily energy expenditure. Number six, you're not tracking alcohol. So let's take weekends a little bit, a little step further here. Alcohol has a lot of calories in it and not even does it, does it have a lot of calories in it? it puts a lot of stress on your body. It is literally a toxin that causes your your body, your liver to work hard to pump it out. So it just, it isn't the best when trying to hit a weight loss goal, but it's not the best when trying to hit a health goal in general. And if you're anything like me, you need a good amount of alcohol to feel any kind of effects on it. So the, the risks more so outweigh the benefits. But if you're serious about making progress, I would limit alcohol consumption to one to two times per week, ideally with one to three drinks per week. And I would absolutely fit those drinks into your macros. You have to track alcohol. You just have to do it. You have to track it as either a carb or a fat in addition to the blank calories it has. A drink or two may fit into your daily goal, but if you're someone who tends to overindulge at the end of the night, account for those drinks ahead of time and plan accordingly. Keep in mind that the foods you eat while drinking alcohol do affect your body. So if you're going to go ahead and and eat greasier fried foods while drinking versus clean, nutrient-dense, healthy foods, anything you put in your body while drinking is going to be broken down slowly. That's because our body has this foreign object in it and it wants to get it out of its system. So it kind of goes into a defensive mode and slows down the processing of food because it needs to overwork in a different department, if that makes sense. So anything you eat that was a little bit greasier is going to stay in your body for longer and in return is going to turn into fat quicker if that makes sense. So why not eat something that supports your body if it's going to be hanging out in there for a little bit longer, right? So me personally, I rarely consume alcohol because of the the negative effects it have it has on your body. Like I said, the benefits do not outweigh the side effects. All right, number 7, you are dehydrated. Believe it or not, being dehydrated makes you retain water. 
weird, right? So it also will cause your body to struggle to recover. Drinking water is such an easy way to make sure your body is getting what it needs. So the rule of thumb is half your weight in ounces should be consumed in water, but I always say shoot for a minimum of 100 ounces a day. You might have even heard me say a gallon a day keeps the fat away. No, that is not scientifically proven. It just keeps you hydrated. It keeps you moving and getting up, going to the bathroom 30 times an hour. Am I right? Okay, number eight. This is a big one. You're not tracking your food accurately. Guys, we track food to hit a nutrition goal, to hit a physique goal, to hit a lifestyle goal. So if you're tracking and you're not putting in effort to hit your calorie goal on a day-to-day basis, you're wasting your damn time. So if you're not measuring, weighing, tracking everything accurately, it can absolutely hinder results. Some common tracking mistakes to ask yourself, am I tracking oils, sauces, marinades, creamers, and supplements? Am I taking bites while cooking and not tracking those bites? You know, I'm doing that, but I try to always overestimate a little bit if I'm tracking, or I'm sorry, if I'm snacking while I'm cooking. Are you weighing and tracking your meat accurately? So raw versus cooked meat is very important. You can literally just Google raw versus cooked meat chart, and it's going to show you what meat raw the weight should be versus cooked. So for chicken, for example, raw meat is going to weigh more. So let's say four ounces of chicken it's going to weigh 25% less when cooked. So then it turns to three ounces. I know it's, it's math, but it's simple math. Honestly, do you have days where you aren't tracking things you're eating? So are you not tracking everything you're eating on the weekends? Number nine, you've been in a deficit for too long. This is different and individual to every person, but as a general rule, we should do deficit breaks at least every four to five months. Do this to give our metabolism a break and let it readapt. Being in a, in a deficit does affect your hormones. Your body has to adapt and learn to a new way of doing things, a new way of functioning, a new lower survival or a new lower amount of calories to survive off of. If you couldn't remember the last time you were in a deficit, it's time to do a reverse diet and go into an overdue maintenance phase for a minimum of four months, but I definitely suggest longer. All right, number 10, you're not being consistent enough. And this is, I can guarantee, almost every single person's listening listening's issue. At the end of the day, even if you're doing all of this, if you're not doing all of it consistently, then you are wasting your time. You're putting in all this effort half of the time for no reason. You're here to change your life. If you half-ass it, you're going to get half-ass results and live a half-ass life. Is that really the type of person you want to be? I I don't want you to look back when you're 80 and say, wow, I really just wish I took better care of myself. You get one life. This is how you take care of yourself better. Those who accomplish your goals, us, we who accomplish our goals are a different breed. So are those who do it through strength training and macro tracking. We show up. We take the time to hit our nutrition goal. We lift the weights when we don't want to. We live above the standard and in return, we have the bodies and minds to prove it. If you want that to be you, you need to do the underlying work. Stop looking for an easy way out. We're just going to keep going on this roller coaster, riding on this hamster wheel. And we're going to be feel miserable all the time. I just got off of a client call right before recording this podcast, actually, and we we're talking about the holidays are coming up. And she said to me every single year, I would eat like shit through the holidays and say, I'm starting over on, in January. I looked at her and I said, well, not anymore. That's over. And what an incredible feeling to, to finally break, break the pattern and do something and show up for yourself and make a change. Because this year through the holidays, she is not going to feel like shit for enjoying the food she loves because of all the tools that I'm teaching her, because of how she's showing up for herself daily, because of the time she is putting in. And we're only about three weeks into our training together. Imagine in another three months what it's going to do for her. Weight loss is really hard, but having the right support and the right plan can absolutely make all the difference. If you're somebody who's been struggling to lose weight for a long time, it's time to get the support that you actually need to make a change. Your health and well-being is literally what's keeping you alive. 
Why do you keep brushing yourself aside? You should be making yourself your number one priority. So if you are ready to get off this hamster wheel and lose weight while enjoying your favorite foods without doing hours of cardio, I absolutely got you. I'll even teach you how to understand your body so you never have to feel stuck again. It's time to invest in yourself for once. You can apply for coaching by clicking the link in the episode notes, or you can even head to my Instagram and click the link in my bio and it'll take you directly to my booking site. I'm going to link all the details below for you guys. So some other things to be mindful of when tracking progress or when thinking I'm not losing weight. If you're upset about the scale, when photos are clearly showing progress, keep this in mind. Progress photos are the best form of tracking progress because even though the scale might not change, your body composition very well might be. So put your start photos next to your current and send them to a friend to help you compare. We often are our biggest critics and can't compare best. We see ourselves every day. So what's going to pop out to somebody else might not pop out to you. You ever lose a couple pounds and, or you've been working on your health, you go see somebody and like, oh my God, you look incredible. And you're like, really? I feel like I have no difference. Shit, you can even send them to me and I'll be an outside view for you. And I like to keep it real as well. So also just do me a favor. Don't weigh in or take progress photos at night. The scale will be up you'll be bloated. My stomach is completely different when I wake up versus when I go to bed. That's because I rest and recover when sleeping. And that's what your body does as well. All right, guys, that is a wrap on episode 11, 10 weight loss mistakes you might be making. If you found that anything was helpful in this episode, please, please share with a friend. I really appreciate when you guys post it on your Instagram stories and tag me in it or message me saying what you learned in the podcast. It really helps me find that that motivation I need to create these episodes for you. So thank you guys so much for listening and have an incredible